All right, everybody, throwing on there at the last second, a little population reduction. That song, Black Mile Beach Party. Before that, some artists. Now, calling in to discuss some topics, a guy who plays in a band called Rude, a band I've talked about on this show before, played their <laughs> album So Recall. Jason, you there? Yes, I am. So we're making sure you're still there because sometimes it does cut out. So here is Jason Brain Splitter. That's what your uh, nickname is, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess so. The brain splitter, yeah, I saw that somewhere, and I kind of used that with the interview. We did the written one, so I thank you for doing that written interview for the uh, Rock and Metal Temple there. So. Of course, man. Thanks for the support. Yeah. And to begin, I was going to say for everybody, I played So Recall some songs off that album when it first came out. And a quick mention, So Recall, it was kind of a, uh, I guess, down to the wire jam almost. You guys recorded that rather quickly. If you could kind of tell people about that, how... The album in the end, you kind of put it together. You know, you had the record deal with FDA, and uh, that album, you know, it, it kind of came together at the last minute almost, right? Uh, well, we had plenty of time to work on it, but just due to other reasons and technical difficulties, and uh, including the, the lineup change, well, it was pretty big, and uh, we, yeah, we just ended up cramming everything in at the last minute. We actually recorded the whole album twice in the first sessions that uh, didn't turn out too well, so that really set us back. Uh, you, speaking of, you know, coming in, you were the guy that came into Root, right? That was a uh, band that you came into. Yeah, but I, I've been recording the band since the uh, Haunted demo, so I, I've pretty much been there since day one. So yeah, you have a little history with them, yeah, before. Now I was going to ask you about So Recall. You said the second half of the album was your favorite, and I kind of wanted you to kind of describe why you kind of like the later songs on that album, you know, why you have more of a, you know, connection, or why do you tend to, you know, favor those songs over the first half. You kind of talked about that in the written interview, but maybe you could describe a little more in detail here on air. Uh, well, having been the producer of the demo, I've, I've heard those songs so many fucking times, just mixing and mastering them, so hearing them again on Soul Recall is, it's great, but I'm kind of tired of it. So uh, I want to hear the new shit. Yeah. I want to hear the more epic stuff. And yeah, I can understand because I played. I was at. I'm trying to remember here my tracks. I'm sorry about that. I have a shitty memory sometimes. Internal, internal ascension that you played. Yeah, internal ascension. I played that, and that was to me. Again, you know the you know later songs. I really dig. You know the complexity of them. Really good stuff there. I'm telling you. Yeah, we're definitely getting more comfortable with. Uh, with our musicality at this point. Yeah. And when you guys play that stuff live, how do you feel? Are you pretty comfortable with it live? Or is this the newer stuff because you guys haven't played it as much? Is it still something more of a challenge? Or is it pretty equal out, you know, when you play live your uh, music? Uh, the newer stuff is definitely more challenging, but, uh, I mean, we're used to it at this point. Yeah. But after a show, we're pretty worn out. Yeah, I mean, I could tell because I saw you guys open for more of an angel, and I was impressed because that was the first time I ever even heard of you guys. I just, because they even tell me. That was a great thing about more of an angel. I didn't even know the openers until the night of the show, and I saw you guys printed, you know, on the paper below as rude, and I said, that's an interesting band name. <laughs> I think that's the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, I, I don't know what this is going to, you know, what am I going to expect? Sure enough, very old school sound, and uh, you guys put on a killer show, and I'm sure being fans of more of an angel, that was an exciting night for you guys. Oh, man, it, it was a dream come true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I could tell you, everybody that night was having fun. There was a little too much anxiousness. If you remember, towards the end of the set, I think they uh, lowered the screen on you guys or something. I can't remember exactly, but... Uh, yeah, totally, we didn't even get to play any of our new songs. Yeah, they, they lowered the screen right then and there, and I was like, oh, darn. I was hoping that you guys were continuing, but uh, you still found a really good set for what it was, man. And uh, I want to talk about, also, with tours, you guys did, a, I guess, a small tour for uh, Soul Recall and, you know, support of the album, but uh, I'm sure you guys want to do some more touring, but can you talk about that tour with, what was it, Skeletal and Derogatory FDA record bands? How was that, you know, again, people don't realize tours aren't glamorous, okay? This isn't Motley Crue or Kiss where they have, you know, buses with food trays. I mean, this is, you know, sweating, working every night, having to hump your own gear, having to do everything, you know, yourself. How was that experience, you know, on that, you know, I guess small tour for Soul Recall? Yeah, I mean, uh, like like you said, it's not so easy. But when you when everybody puts in the collective effort to make it happen, it, it's completely worth it. Uh, we brought Skeletal out from France. They they play an awesome 
old school Swedish style. Uh, I'd highly recommend you look them up and maybe play a song on here if you get the chance. Yeah, I will definitely yeah. do, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Derogatory, another FDA band from L.A. that plays uh, a more technical style. And, man, yeah, like you said, we're we're crammed in a sweaty van, uh, Skeletal and Rude. We were both in one van uh, with the trailer. And then Derogatory, they were all cramming in, like, a little, little Subaru or something like that with all their shit crammed in the trunk. Like, uh, I don't know how they managed to make it all the way up and down with us. I mean, that's pretty insane, dude. I mean, again, like you said there, everybody, you have to have really good camaraderie, I'm sure, you know, because being in a cram band like that, and especially driving for many miles, is you guys went up, was it, to Oregon and Seattle? Uh, yeah, we went up to Seattle. That, that, again, from Seattle and down, you know, doing that extensive tour. And then you guys play at the Metro, and like you were talking about in the Rent interview, and I remember I had work or something that night, so I couldn't go, but... You guys played at the Oakland Metro with, I forgot how many bands, it was like two tours coincided, right? And you had a, two stages even for that show. Uh, so it ended up being like eight or nine bands. <laughs> That's insane. And uh, yeah, all of them were, were pretty solid bands. I, I was stoked to be a part of that. Yeah, I'm sure. And now, I want to talk about, because outside of playing music, and uh, if people want to read, they have the written interview, you do something again outside of music as i guess this is a career it's your uh, you record you do some recording for albums and you recorded soul recall right you were the guy behind that right and i recorded the haunted demo too the haunted demo so you do recording you know how is that venture outside of you know playing music you know recording for other bands you know what's that experience like to do and you know work with the other bands well uh there's been a lot of ups and downs to that actually i mean uh, when I first started doing it, I just kind of had a, a laptop and a drum mic kit, and I was just recording my own band in my living room, and it sounded good enough that other people wanted me to do it. And at one point, I even had a, a pretty legitimate recording studio in downtown Oakland with, like, separate rooms and windows between them and everything, but it's because of uh, the ongoing gentrification and the rising cost of, of property. Uh, I got kicked out of that after like three or four months. There was a new owner of the building. He just kicked everybody out and he's renovating and stacking up rent. And I don't know if I'll be able to find a place like that again. Yeah, again, hopefully. I think it's a great what you're doing. Again, you're helping out the younger bands or the bands that are starting out. Again, you yourself, again, are starting in this industry. And again, nowadays it's so hard. I don't think people realize, you know, we're, it's, uh, it's something that we love to do. You know, the music, be a part of it is just unfortunately... You know, it's a challenge, especially with the rising costs and just how the whole market's shaping up to be. But you're you're still working at it, right? You're not giving up. You're still doing the recordings. Definitely. Um, nowadays, uh, I've kind of mobilized my setup, and I actually just kind of pack it in my car and bring it to whatever band's rehearsal space uh, and just kind of set up where they're where they're already comfortable. Now that's a good idea. That's a really smart idea. Now, the last questions I wanted to ask is I even said when I emailed you about, you know, the interview, you know, talking about some favorite albums. I noticed you really uh, emphasize the Atheist albums. You're really, you know, digging that. Those are a couple of your favorite albums. I want you to, you know, you know describe if you could. W what makes you so attracted to them or you, you know, really dig those albums, you know? Well, just the, the sheer musicality of it and the, the depth of it, it, it really, uh, it, it's really gripping to me, you know, like it, it's more interesting than just a, a sea of blast beats and D beats and power chords and tremolo picking, you know, when, when bands can really dive into their imaginations and pull out something so creative, like, like what bands like Atheist have done, where, you know, you get this incredibly dynamic, uh, d dynamic production of, of certain parts are loud and certain parts are quiet and certain parts are, really in your face aggressive and sometimes it's melodic yeah. and i think that's really exciting yeah, i get that same film i listened to what was it pestilence spheres to me that album is so unique the yeah, dynamics of that, that. I, I, again i like that stuff too and you're, you're into that and you said in another project you were kind of doing that before so was that some, yeah, the, you, uh, an older project of mine was called lobotomizer yeah and i actually wasn't playing bass in that one i was playing guitar and doing most of the songwriting and our bassist was just fucking nuts. He he showed me all sorts of crazy stuff that kind of that 
that I absorbed into my own style on bass. That sounds pretty cool. Now, the last question, I feel I don't want to keep you too long. You know, I thank you for calling in here. But the last question I want to, you know, again, the future of Rude. You guys, you were talking in the interview, you have a tour of Europe. And also, again, it sounds like you want to hit the ground running and put out another album, you know, again, build off the momentum of So Recall. So uh, can you maybe give a little hints about where is that going? And you also said, hopefully, Dan Seagrave, you know, cross our fingers after that awesome album, you know, artwork you did for Soul Recall, you might do another one. So uh, the future of Root, if you can, kind of, you know, summarize it for us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, FGA Records has been putting out some really good promotion for us in Europe, and uh, I think we're going to be utilizing a lot of those connections uh, probably spring of next year. Uh, we're hoping to meet up with our French friends and Skeletal again and hopefully tour with them. And, uh, yeah, we're on contract to do one more album with FDA and uh, going to hit up Dan Seagrave for that again and, you know, keep it old school and keep it, keep it badass. And that is exactly what I like. So I say, oh, do not change my mellow brother. Just keep it going, man. It's great stuff. So we'll the last song here, everybody, I'll be playing. And uh, this is from Soul Recall, the song Conjuring Fates, or Conjuring of Fates, excuse me. Got to say the correct full title. Though. Here we go. Thank you again, Jason, for calling in, dude, and uh, talking today here in the Hard Rock and Heavy Metal Zone.